Thank you, Brenda. I'm pleased to join everyone for this important workshop on advancing generic drug development. And I'm very sorry we can't be together in person. This workshop is a critical vehicle for helping stimulate innovation in generic drug development. It provides you the opportunity to hear from FDA staff about regulatory advice on these topics and recent scientific advances, including modeling and simulation, artificial intelligence, and imaging tools, to name a few of the topics we'll focus on. Equally important, of course, are the discussions, which play a role in generating new and better ways to support industry in the development of more uh, efficient bioequivalence approaches, advanced analytical tools, and other tools that can lead to more complete abbreviated new drug applications, commonly called ANDAs, and more first cycle approvals. So my appreciation to all the developers and other stakeholders who've joined today's discussion. Now, in reviewing today's agenda, I was struck by the second part of the workshop's title, Translating Science to Approval. That phrase not only highlights what FDA is trying to do with generic drugs, but also it underscores a key element of the FDA's work across our oversight of medical products. As regulators, one of our primary responsibilities, of course, is helping to ensure every drug or medical product we approve is safe and effective. But there's an, another important and complementary aspect of this process, which is the work we do to promote innovation. As you understand, it's not enough just to have groundbreaking scientific developments and ideas. We need to make sure these promising developments are translated into meaningful products that can make a difference for and are readily available to patients. The FDA involvement with the development of generic drugs epitomizes this process and approach. We know how important competition for generic drugs can be in helping lower drug prices and improving access for American patients and consumers. And we also know how important access to safe, effective, and affordable medicines is for Americans, something we've seen reinforced during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the American public understands this as well. On this point, consider these two revealing statistics. The first is that generic drugs today continue to account for about 90% of all prescription drugs dispensed in the U.S., the second is that these products only account for 20% of all prescription drug spending. That's why it's a public health priority for the FDA to work with industry and continue to provide patients with greater access to high quality, safe and effective generic medicines. Now, one way we've accomplished this is through our Drug Competition Action Plan or DCAP, which is designed to remove barriers to generic drug development and market entry and to spur competition so consumers can access the medicines they need at the prices they can afford. This work to encourage generic competition builds on the commitments reflected in the Generic Drug User Fee Amendments, or GDUFA agreement. And I'll talk uh, a little bit more about the importance of GDUFA shortly. A top priority under DCAP is encouraging competition by maximizing scientific and regulatory clarity around complex generic drugs, which is one of the focal points of this meeting. Complex drugs are critical to the treatment of many medical conditions, but because they can be more scientifically challenging, time-consuming, and expensive to develop, these drugs can lack adequate generic competition. Now, the list of complex products includes many different types, those with complex active ingredients, such as peptides, those with complex formulations, for example, liposomal, complex route of delivery, such as locally acting drugs, complex dosage forms, such as certain transdermals, and complex drug device combo products, such as autoinjectors, where we're seeing more and more of these all the time. And also there are other products where complexity or uncertainty concerning the approval pathway or possible alternative approaches would benefit from early scientific engagement. 
Workshops like this are particularly important because they enable us to focus on these products and address the complexity or uncertainty surrounding their development. This, in turn, can help us provide clarity on the path to approval. As I mentioned, GDUFA plays a very important role in making both the development of generic drugs easier and the review of generic drug applications more efficient by proactively addressing emerging scientific and regulatory challenges. For example, the GDUFA Science and Research Program enables FDA to advance the development of generic drugs by addressing complex scientific issues, developing product-specific guidances for industry, and communicating with applicants through pre-abbreviated new drug application or pre-ANDA meetings to help clarify regulatory expectations for those prospective applicants early in the generic drug product development cycle before they may have gone down the wrong path. The pre-ANDA program in particular was designed specifically to support development of complex generic drug products where there isn't maybe a well-trodden pathway for people to, to follow. These early communications can help reduce a generic drug product's timeline in the pipeline from concept to development to market by helping them develop more complete application submissions that satisfy all the requirements. In the last few months, thanks in part to these provisions, we've seen several important approvals of generic that are complex. For example, in July, the FDA approved the first generic palipiridone palmitate extended release injectable suspension, a one month long acting injectable product indicated for the acute and maintenance treatment of schizophrenia in adults. Modeling and simulation approaches were used to support uh, pharmacokinetic study design and bioequivalence evaluation of this product. And last month, the FDA approved the first generic ophthalmic emulsion product, diflupredinate ophthalmic emulsion, a topical corticosteroid indicated for the treatment of inflammation and pain associated with ocular surgery. Uh, yeah, we've had a, a lot of difficulty with uh, ophthalmic emulsion uh, products, so this is a real milestone. And this approval was possible because of an in vitro bioequivalence approach, which was supported by GDUFA funded research and delineated in FDA's product specific guidance for this drug. It involved our internal collaborative GDUFA research between our Office of Generic Drugs and our Office of Pharmaceutical Quality, which supported the assessment of particle size characterization, in vitro drug distribution, and in vitro drug release methods for this more efficient bioprevalence approach. And this is exactly what we mean when we talk about turning scientific achievements into usable and accessible products for patients. We're looking forward to the reauthorization of GDUFA so we can continue to provide direct support for the generic drug program and work to further enhance efficiency, transparency, and increase the number of first cycle approvals which has been sort of a holy grail in this program to get it right the first time. I also want to point out that throughout the pandemic, we've maintained FDA's gold standard of evaluating products based on quality data and sound science, while continuing to meet our GDUFA commitment for reviewing applications in a timely manner. I know you have a lot to discuss today, and I certainly hope you have a productive meeting. Thank you again for your participation and your ideas.